for joining me today and welcome to YouTube and sharing videos online. Today I'm going to discuss how to create a YouTube account and the different options that are available for you once you are ready to publish. After that I will demonstrate how to upload files from a computer, focusing on the website interface, how to find the files in question, and how to handle different file types. Then we will discuss options related to uploading files from a phone or tablet. This will include how to record videos using the YouTube app, other video sharing options that are available, and how to upload videos from your phone to the video sharing app that you're interested in. Finally, I'll present editing options available for both computers and phones, focusing on basic tools that can help create presentable videos. With that, let's get started. So for those of you wondering how do I create a YouTube account, the answer is there's a good chance you already have one. YouTube is owned by Google, so everyone that has a Gmail account also has an associated YouTube account with this. You might not have known that. If that's the case, that's fine. Even if you haven't been using it, it's there. If you don't have a Gmail account, you just go to gmail.com and go through the account creation process like you would with any other email service. You give a name, username, password, some kind of authentication, and then you're ready to go. Once you're signed in and you're in Gmail, you can see on the right hand side here where the little nine dot grid is, you have a lot of different options available to you. This would take you to Play Store and Google Drive and Calendar and a lot of tools, but today we're talking about YouTube. And so by clicking on that, you would open up YouTube and then you would see your YouTube account. Now I'm signed into the library's YouTube account right now, and so you will see things related to that as we go through this. Once you're here, if you're not familiar with YouTube, I'm gonna give you a brief over overview of what we're seeing. Right in the middle is the suggested videos or videos from people that you follow. In this case, many of these are suggested for the library and unrelated to anything that we have. But if you look on the left-hand side, you can see a lot of the information specific to your account, particularly library of videos that you have available to you, subscriptions that you might follow. If you click on the show more, you will see video lists that you have created. And you can see a lot of the lists for the library videos that we have. We have story times, crafts, computer classes, piano shows, and so on. These are all things that you would use as a YouTube user, somebody that is just watching videos. But as somebody that's creating videos, you might be interested in some of the more interesting features or more complicated ones. For those, we're going to go over here to the upper right where we see our logo for the Bloomingdale Library. It's this dragonfly. For you, you might have a picture of yourself or it might just be your initial. And when you click on that, a bunch of information pops down. Now you see going from the top down, we start out with your channel. We'll look at that in just a minute. That's going to show you all of the videos you've uploaded so far. For you, that might be blank. There might be a lot more to it. Underneath there, purchases and memberships. These can be videos that you've purchased through YouTube store. You can buy a lot of things that are available here, such as movies or um, theater performances or other things that are not available for free. And memberships could be advanced subscriptions to YouTube, things like YouTube Red, where you don't have to pay for or don't have to watch commercials. Or there are specific kinds of memberships for different subscription services that are available through YouTube. Underneath there, YouTube Studio has a lot of advanced features that allow you to edit and work with your videos. That's a little bit beyond the scope of today's class, but I wanted to make, make you aware of that. Switch account allows you to change between multiple Google accounts. If you have several, maybe more than one person in your household has this, so you can go back and forth between them. Sign out is what you would do if you were done and you didn't want anybody else to be able to access this. So if it's a public computer or one that you share with somebody else. Appearance is just changing the layout of the screen here. Location affects how things are displayed. And then settings is a little bit more interesting. That's one that we're going to get into in a moment. That's going to have some security and privacy settings that you might want to change. So we're going to take a look at that together. Let's start out, though, with your channel. So I click on your channel. And this is taking you to information about your video channel. You can see here at the Bloomingdale Public Library, we have 170 subscribers. If you're not subscribed and you want to catch more of our videos, I'd encourage you to do so. You see underneath at home and it has a lot of information but you can also go straight to your videos which shows you just a comprehensive list of all the videos usually in reverse order from when they're uploaded you can go to playlists which has any playlist that you've created so we can go through there and you can see any particular ones if you want to view a full playlist you go to that take a step back channels these are Featured or recommended channels for kids, other things that you might have added, depending on your content there. And discussion is if there's any comments or anything that you have going with that. And then about is information that you have 
created when you filled in the details of your account. You see we have it rather limited here. Sometimes people will have links to their business's homepage or other information like that. You see social links, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram that we'd have available. And then a search feature to allow you to look through that site and go through it. So this is what you can find on the channel. You see there are options to customize channel and manage videos. Customized channel gets into a lot of details here where you can control the uploads, create a number of playlists, turn on and off subtitles, and a lot of things that we're going to look through in just a moment. Manage videos is something that you would go straight to if, for example, you wanted to delete a number of videos, um, make changes to the descriptions, and you do that by going to the one that you want to edit. Now, I'm not going to change any of these because these are, of course, other videos from the library. I can go into options here, edit title and description, get a shareable link if you wanted to send something to people, download this if you want to save a copy of this video locally to the computer that you're working on, or delete forever. Promote is to push it to the front of your page to make it more prominent to try to get more views for that one. Of course, I want to be very careful with this. I don't want to delete anybody else's work here at the library, but you have a lot of options available for you there. You can also check a number of videos and then go into the options that you have for these. So if you want to change them in mass or delete them in mass or add to playlists that are existing. So those are things that we can do within the manage videos feed. Back to the customization. We see this is where we would find tools like analytics. So you can see how many views you're getting, how long people are watching them, you know, engagement, how much time people are spending on it. What, how much of the video people are watching. So if you want to see where to have your key content, so I can see, okay, people got about halfway through this one. People watched all of that. So maybe I'm making this a bit too long and adjust accordingly. Playlists. You see you have the option to make a new playlist up here. So if you don't have any playlists yet and you're uploading a lot of videos, if you want to group them, maybe you have... Um, videos of family members, maybe you have pet videos, maybe you have travel videos, and you want to separate those into different categories so that people can find what they like on your page easily, then you can do that. If you're doing this for a business, you might have informational videos or advertisements. You can organize those however you like as well. So the playlist can be very useful tools. You see here we have playlists, as I mentioned before, things like all the computer classes grouped together or crafts and story times. So when people come to the library's website, if perhaps they come here for this video today and they decide they want to see more, they can go to the other computer classes by going to that playlist and looking through them, and they wouldn't have to scroll past all the story times if that wasn't something that was age appropriate for them. So this can be a very useful tool. I'd encourage you to create playlists if you're going to have more than just a couple videos on YouTube. Now, once you've done all of that, or you're aware of all of that, let's talk about actually uploading and creating the video. So I'm going to close this go back to where we were starting from scratch here if I wanted to just upload a video I would click on the video button and create in the upper right hand corner there and you see we have two choices upload video and go live go live is if you wanted to have a live video recording you want to live stream to your YouTube channel that means that it would be displaying to the world through YouTube as you were creating it that is of course very different from recording a video and uploading it as I am doing right now if you have videos saved, whether they're saved from a cell phone or saved from a uh, digital recording that you created off of something that you had before or they're emailed to you or edited by you for, for whatever reason, you're going to want to upload that video. That's, for most people, what you do most of the time with YouTube. There are other services that do more of the go-live streaming, and we will talk about those a little bit later in the class today. But the focus for YouTube is typically uploaded videos that can be reached anytime. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Click Upload Video. And you see you have the choice to either drag and drop videos to upload. So if you had a folder open right now, you could drag it right to there. Or Select Files. We'll talk a little bit about different file types later on in class today. But YouTube is very uh, flexible in what file types it can work with. Whether you use an iPhone or an Android or a digital camera to record the files, you will generally not have any trouble with what you have saved onto your computer or onto your phone uploading onto YouTube. The only situations where you might run into this is sometimes if you have things like security footage, 
for security cameras that you might have in your home or business, those can create some oddball file types. If you are working with a file type and it doesn't upload to YouTube, there are products that you can purchase that will convert that for you, but there are also a lot of free websites available. So if you were to Google convert and then type in the file type that you've created with your video file to .mp4 or .mov or .mpg, which are very common uh, video file types, you will find a lot of websites that will do that, and you will have to see some ads, but that'll be about all that you'll be subjected to. So uh, there are a lot of options available for you with that, but more and more, that's not a problem. Most video recording files are becoming the same two or three different file types, and they work pretty smoothly with YouTube and the other apps we're going to discuss. But YouTube in particular is very flexible with what it allows you to upload. Now, I am going to select files so I don't have to go over to a different window. And it's going to ask where I should get this from. Now, you might have your files in the downloads. You might have them on your desktop or in your pictures. In this case, I have something that I just put in videos for us to work with. And I will grab this video that I saved for this purpose. And I click Open. Now, it's going to take a moment to upload that. I intentionally did a small video, so it will not take very long. At this point, it's allowing me to fill in some information here. So it's asking for a title. I will call this sample dog video description. Here you would typically put something in that would help the viewers understand what is going on with this. You might have links to other videos in your stream if they're related. You might have uh, links to other resources online that were useful. You can put a lot of things in the description. I'm going to do something pretty minimal here. I will just put in Something like that. Now, with the thumbnail, that's what are you going to see when you see this video come across on your suggestion stream, or if somebody subscribes to it, what will they first see? Any of you that have used YouTube much have experienced this. You go to YouTube and you see a big splash greeting screen or a presentation slide or a fancy title in front of it. You don't see the opening moment of the video like we have right now. If you are doing something more professional or more elaborate, you can create a file and you can upload that as the thumbnail. We're going to keep it simple today, and I'm going to grab one of these pictures. I'll take that one, and we'll use that as the thumbnail. But if you had something a little fancier looking, you could use that as well. For playlists, you can select one of the existing playlists. I will toss this in computer classes. Then audience, it's asking, is this made for kids or is this not made for kids? So depending on what kind of content you're uploading, you can indicate whether or not it's made for kids. This will affect how it's presented, who it's advertised to, and how it's pushed around. So I will say, yes, this is fine for kids. And if you want to get more specific, you can put in age restrictions if you want to limit that. If you have paid promotions, you can indicate that. And then finally, you can put in any tags that you want. This is similar to hashtags that you would use in social media. But these are searchable words that will help people find what this is looking for. So I could put in things like dog stairs. And you separate these with commas so that it creates them as tags. Now, why do you do all of this? Why do you put all this information in for it to be uh, searchable and indexable and help it to be found? That's if you want this to be for more than just yourself. This is something that I could have talked about earlier. When working with YouTube, you can choose, is this a resource that you're going to use to be able to display videos to other people that you know when you want, or to be able to send the videos directly to people? Or is this something that you're trying to promote as part of an organization or part of a business that you are running and you want people to find it independently? If you're gonna be sending links to these videos to whoever is going to see them, then you don't need to worry too much about the descriptions or the tags because you're gonna be pushing people directly to it. But if you want people to find this, then you want to use recognizable words that might come up with the search algorithm when people look for things. Exactly how YouTube makes their videos found by other people is not known, and that is on purpose. They don't want people to game the system, so they try to keep it hidden how they 
make these searches work, but people try to put in relevant information to make their videos come up more often. So if you are doing this professionally or you want your carpet cleaning business or whatever it might be to come up, you want to put relevant descriptions into any of the videos that you have here. Now, when I scroll down through all of these different options that I've chosen, I can see I can put in a recording date and location if that's relevant. Do I want to publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers? Normally you would want that to be checked. I'm going to uncheck that because this is just a demo that I am doing for today's class and I don't want to publish this right away. You can choose a category. Again, you choose what's appropriate for your business. We're doing education right now. And I am going to click next. Now you see they offer you some options here. You can add an end screen or add title cards. I am going to say next. It does a quick check for copyright. You will occasionally have conflicts with this. Say, say you videotape somewhere where there is background music playing. If there was a recognizable song playing in the background, that can be a copyright issue. So you might not have intended to steal anything, but if it sees something or hears something in the background that is copyrighted material, sometimes you will be notified that you had a copyright violation. So that will come up sometimes and it might surprise you even when you weren't meaning to do anything wrong. If that's the case, you can go back and edit the video and try to pull the sound out to avoid that problem. Finally, with the choice of save or publish, I can choose want whether to make this private or unlisted or public. Public means that everybody can see it. Unlisted means that people can see it, but they have to have the video link, so I have to send it to them. So it will not appear in my video feed. And private means, of course, only I can see it, or I have the option of sharing it privately, but somebody can't get to it just by following the link. You can also create a schedule, which allows you to release it at a certain time. So if you have big release dates or times planned, or you have times when videos are going to premiere, like for example, this class that premieres at seven o'clock on uh, Monday night, then you will have scheduled times for them to appear, even though they might be recorded and uploaded long before that. I'm gonna leave this as private because again, this is just a silly little 10 second video that I made for this demonstration. And then finally, I'm going to click save. You notice they have a couple of warnings here for content guidance and do kids appear in this and they have information about protecting people from harm and how to not violate their rules. Feel free to read that and spend some time on that when you're interested. I will show you briefly if you choose schedule, then you would set a day and time that you want that to come up. But I am again going to go back to here. Premiere is when you and your viewers watch it together. So you want to check that so it'll have a premiere time. Um, that can be another feature that you offer to try to draw attention to your videos. I choose save and publish privately. I save. Sometimes it will take a while for a video to upload. This is not one of those times. This was a nine second video. It happens very quickly. You will often, after you upload something larger, you will see it uploading for a while. You'll see a percentage go through. And then finally, you will see processing after that. So it takes a while to copy it. And then once it arrives on YouTube, it takes some time to process it. Once I've gone through all of that, I can now click on the video, take a look at it here. I also have a video link available. And we can watch that and see the result. Let's take a moment to quickly look at the settings and then we'll go back to managing this account and get rid of this video. So down here in the bottom left, we see the settings. That's also available if we had gone to the upper right where our icon was at just about any time. I wanna go over a few of these for you real quick. So here in the general settings, just asking our currency and the default units that we work with, that's not something you'd be likely to change. If you go to the channel, you can see a few different features we might change here. Basic information. Right now, the name of our channel is Bloomingdale Public Library. Maybe the name that you have for your Gmail account is not the name that you want for your channel. That is something that you can change, but you do need to go into your Google accounts options for that. So that's a little bit outside of today's class. You would go over to your Gmail account and change the settings there. Country of residence, again, we talked about that before. And you can have some basic keywords associated with your account to help people find it if they're searching for information about a certain thing. So when you search for, say, educational computer videos, you not only find videos related to that, you find accounts. And if you wanted to have keywords that would help people pull you, help pull people in, you would add them here. Under advanced settings, you can choose here if you want to have your channel set as, 
uh, made for kids, or if you want to review that for every video, which we have set here. Do you want to have auto-generated captions? So that means if people turn on the closed captioning, it will automatically put what I'm saying appearing underneath there. And if you've ever worked with closed captioning things, you know that they're not great. They will make mistakes from time to time. Notice this one has the option, don't show potentially inappropriate words. So if it mishears what I say, or if I say the wrong thing, it will not put that down there and have an embarrassing screenshot for us for our information that we put out. Subscriber count, do you want to display the number of people subscribed to my channel, or do you want to keep that secret? Advertisements. Um, you can choose to turn off interest-based ads. Uh, that is a privacy issue. You can choose whether or not you want to have that. Interest-based ads means that it is using cookies to see what other things people searched for and do related ads on that. Um, managing your YouTube account, removing YouTube content, and advanced channel settings are other things we, would, we will talk about in the class. Uh, we're going to go to managing the account and content in just a moment. Before we do that, I want to show you upload defaults. Remember all those features that we were typing in for our video? If you have a lot of things with the same content or similar, you can put some defaults here and then you can just change the details later on. So you could put in a basic title that always appears, a basic description that always appears, the same visibility every time and the same tags. And then if you had little changes to make with each video, you could do that. So if you have a lot of similar content, you can go, th go through it that way. You can also change the defaults for other settings that you have here as well. Now with that, let's go back to the channel content. You see that in the upper left. By the way, if you ever get lost with this, you can always just click on studio or you can always just go back to youtube.com. So if you ever find yourself digging through these features and you wonder, hey, what happened here? Where did we go? You can click on the icon and just go back to your channel there or you can change the address at the top and just go to youtube.com. So don't worry if you find yourself too deep in these menus, easy to get back to where you want to go. I can just say, take me back to YouTube, and here we are back where we started. Now let's go back to your channel, and I'm going to look at all the videos and manage videos. And so you can see all the videos that we have created here. Why didn't I see my little dog video in the videos that we had with this? Well, this is set to private. And for good reason, because I didn't want to publish that to the front of the library's page, just a nine second video of a dog running down some stairs. So once I get here, I could look through the stats. You see there's one view, that was us. We just watched it together a moment ago. You can see any comments, and you can see this for all of the videos that you have. You can have a lot of information. You'll see some of them will have a lot of views, some of them not so many, depending again on your content. If I wanted to get into analytics where the views came from, that's always more interesting when you have more numbers to work with. If you have two or three views, you're not going to get much out of that. Again, we have the comments options, the editing. We can just play it or view it on YouTube. I want to delete this. So I go into options and I'm going to choose delete forever. So I click that. I check I understand that deleting is permanent and can't be undone. There is not a safety net for this. You want to be aware of that. Here they give you the download video. If you're ever unsure about deleting something, but you want to have it off of your site, you can choose to download it to the computer that you're working on and keep a copy of it that way so you don't lose the content. Even if you are, still have the original video that you took with the video recorder, whether it was a digital video recorder, recorder or a cell phone or whatever it might be, you might want to choose to download the video because YouTube does make some changes and edits to make things fit its format, and you might want to just hold on to that YouTube quality and design video so that you can come back to it later. And that way you might be able to save yourself time if you wanted to bring this back. So keep that option in mind. I am going to choose to delete forever. And we see it is gone. Again, that happened quickly. It was a short video, although it usually does not take very long. Now with that, that is how we would work with uploading things to YouTube from the computer. We're going to go into working with uploading files uh, to YouTube, working with a cell phone in just a moment. Before that, I want to talk about other video sharing tools that are out there. I mentioned this in the description of the class and I wanna take a moment to talk about video sharing options that we have available to us and why you would use one or the other. YouTube is still the premier place to display videos of just about any size, short, long, um, any content that you wanna have, you can typically have on YouTube. There are two, there are some censorship rules, especially if you're trying to monetize your videos with advertisements, but for the most part, 
it is a pretty free form place where you can upload just about any content in any size or video type. However, there are some tools that you might want to use for other things. So I'm going to run through a few of them here. First off, we have Facebook and Facebook Watch. If you haven't used Facebook much before, I would be surprised. It's you know, very commonly used somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half billion active users in the world right now. And Facebook is the number one competitor for YouTube with the number of video watches that happen on a daily basis. They don't seem like direct competitors because YouTube isn't exactly social media in the same way that Facebook is, but Facebook has quite a few videos being watched every day, and so that is a tool that you can use for it. Now, uploading things to Facebook will in all likelihood reach more people, at least at first, than YouTube will, but you might find that Facebook has a harder time indexing or organizing your videos. You can do it, you can organize them into galleries and arrange them in certain ways, but it's not as intuitive a resource and as easy to search through as YouTube is. It can be difficult to scroll through all the different content, pictures, videos, and posts that you have on Facebook to find what you're looking for, whereas YouTube is faster to search and faster to look through the organizational tools. So for that reason, Facebook is good, especially the Facebook Watch when you're doing live videos for reaching people for live events, but not as good for archiving or having a lot of long-term accessible resources like we have here on the library's YouTube page. Another resource you might consider is Instagram and or Instagram TV. Instagram is a social media site typically used with cell phones, although it can be accessed through a web browser as well. Normally it works with shorter videos, one minute or less. If you have longer videos that you want to display, then you would need to create an IGTV account that allows you to show the first minute of the video on Instagram, and then it links to the full video on Instagram TV where you can see the rest of it. Uh, Instagram allows you when you're uploading the video to make some basic edits in appearance and length and, and other s simple changes that you would work with. But for the most part, it is an easy sharing tool that is used by a lot of people to share shorter videos. So it may or may not be appropriate for what you're doing. Similar to that is TikTok. TikTok is something that you would be more likely to use if you're using it as a tool for recording the videos as well, because it has a lot of built-in editing and design tools that you can use while you are recording them. There's a lot of content that you can create with it and a lot of things that you can make with it. It's a very interesting social media tool and device that you can have for creating a lot of options, but it's not something that you would do as much for just straight uploading videos that you would create in other content. It also typically works with shorter videos. They're a little bit looser in the standards than Instagram is, but you, you normally have shorter videos on TikTok than you would on YouTube. Some other options that are out there, uh, Periscope and Twitch are both live streaming tools that allow you to stream things as you're going. That's similar to the go live option that we saw there. Um, Periscope is used a lot in live broadcasts or when people are showing you walkthroughs of things or day in the life kind of videos as they're traveling around with their phones. Uh, it's an interesting tool. It has a lot of different content, but it doesn't work in the same way that YouTube does as a storage space for a lot of long-term videos. Twitch is, again, a live streaming tool that is shown as it's being recorded. It tends to focus more on gaming and similar things that would be streamed live from a desktop computer, but it is also a very popular platform for those specific areas. Programs like Vim, or websites and apps like Vimeo, Dailymotion, and Metacafe are something of competitors to YouTube in that they are similar uh, large video repositories, but they have different emphasis. None of them are quite as successful as YouTube, and while that isn't not in and of itself a statement that they are necessarily better, that indicates that they won't have as much content available or searchable on them, and so fewer people will come there, and so if you're trying to reach a bigger audience, you're more likely to succeed with YouTube. However, some of them, uh, Vimeo in particular, will have higher quality video displays available to them. So if you're doing anything where you want really high quality media or very beautiful video or sound to go with it, you might want to consider having links to Vimeo as well. A lot of YouTube videos will have an introduction where they show a short trailer for something and then they'll have a link to go to Vimeo to see the entire thing if you want to have a higher quality video available, something to consider. Finally, I want to mention Snapchat and Twitter. These are both sites that are not necessarily directed at video sharing, but they do share a lot of videos every day in numbers of millions. Uh, so there are resources available for sharing those. 
They again tend to be shorter content. A lot of times, especially on Twitter, the video shared will be a link to the YouTube video. So you would upload it to YouTube first and then share it. People do that on Facebook as well. So in that case, YouTube is sort of the baseline resource and then you share it to other social media tools. But those options are available to you. So I wanted to make you aware of that, that you can share them directly through that content. I will mention this again when we're talking about working with these cell phones, but if you are working with any editing tools on your computer and they have the option to upload directly to any of the social media sites that I just mentioned or even upload directly to YouTube, I generally recommend against that. I suggest you first save the video after you have edited it and then once you have that saved either on your phone or locally on the computer you are working with, you then upload it from the phone or the computer to YouTube or whatever social media tool you are using. In my experience, some of the social media tools, if you upload directly to them, and some of the video editing tools as well, will crop the videos as you upload them or make other changes that you're, you're not anticipating. So I like to save them first so that I always have a copy of it in my gallery, if it's a phone or stored on my computer if I'm working on the computer. And that way, if the upload doesn't go as anticipated, I can go back to that version that I've saved and I can try again or I can figure out what went wrong. With that, let's take a look at some of the options available to us on the phones. I'd now like to take a moment to talk about the YouTube app for phones. I'm going to be working with the Android YouTube app, but it's very similar to the one that you would use on an iPhone. And because we're talking about working with the phones and you would not be able to see my fingers pressing on the phone button since we're doing this over YouTube, what I've done is I've taken a number of screenshots and I'm going to show you with the mouse on these screenshots what we would click on to get to various places. Of course, if you're doing this in person, you'd be pressing just simply with your finger on the option on your phone and it'd be jumping in step by step. But I wanted to demonstrate this to you as best I could. So as we're going through this, this is the welcome screen on a YouTube app when I sign into it. You see we have similar things to what we saw when we were on the website. We have the notifications here that lets you know about any activity on your feed or any activity on the subscriptions that you follow. We have the search option and then we have your own personal profile option. And I would have then clicked or pressed on that. And that would jump me to the next screen where it's showing my profile and it's showing I can go to the home screen, look at my videos, my playlists, different channels available. And then down here at the bottom, you see some of these options and you see the plus right in the middle of it. That's what we're gonna use today. We're gonna press on that to add a video to our YouTube feed. Now, when you do that, we'd have the same thing that we saw before. Do you want to upload a video or do you want to go live? We talked about this already. If you want to upload something that you've recorded already, that's what you would do with upload a video, whether you've edited it or you just recorded and saved it. If you want to live stream something as you're going, you would choose go live. This is a little bit more likely when we're talking about doing it with a cell phone, because if we're walking around with our cell phone, we might want to record something as it's happening. But still, I think most of the time you're going to choose to upload a video. When you do that, you will be taken to the gallery on your phone. So this is a list of all of the videos that are available to you on the phone that you have stored locally. This is not pulling things from your uh, Google Cloud account or your iCloud account. These are things that are saved on the phone that you are using. And you can then select whichever one you want simply by pressing it and clicking the next arrow that will appear. Once you do that, it will take you to the screen where you would fill in all the same information and all the same details that we did when we were uploading this using the browser. So the upload process from a phone is very similar to what you would do when you are working with this on a browser. It tends to be a little bit easier for people because you don't have to browse and find the file where it's stored on your computer. It goes straight to the gallery for you so people know where that is already. And most people do most of their recording these days with their phones. And so if you have that stored on the phone already, that can be an efficient way to save it to YouTube. So if this is something that you want to do and want to use, you might want to add that app to your phone or tablet. Now with that, let's go over and take a look at some of the editing options that we have available to us. Now let's talk about editing videos using your phone. Since we are talking about working with something on the phone again, I'm going to be using the same trick where I have screenshots available here and show you with the mouse what it is that I'm talking about and what we're doing. And I'm going to be using an app called VideoShop. This is a free application that neither I nor the library have any association with, but I found it to be fairly user-friendly and a lot of my students have liked it in the past. And so that's the one that I'm going to demonstrate with. 
there are a lot of similar apps available. If you search for video editing in either the App Store or the Google Play Store, you will see lots of options available to you and you can read the reviews or test things out and see what works best for you. This is one that I like to use for demonstration purposes. If you are interested in editing the video on your computer instead of on the phone, I would refer you to our earlier class, Basic Video Editing on Your PC. I have the link to it right here, and this will also be included in the description of this class, so you can bounce over to that if you want to learn more about editing things on your computer. Editing on phones is usually a little bit easier and quicker. Editing on computers allows you to have more functionality and make a lot more changes. Uh, they are usually bigger programs that have more features available, so I would encourage you to check that out if you want to really get into video editing and make these things look very sharp or professional or just have fun with it, because there can be a lot of fun to have there. So, if you choose to do this on the phone and you install the Video Shop app, you will see this at, right at the top when you open it up. Underneath, you would see any previous projects you had worked on or just a blank screen waiting for you to add something new in. But the important part is up here at the top where you see this plus symbol. So you would press on the plus symbol with your finger, and that would take you to the next screen where it's asking, do you want to record or import the clip? This is something we've seen several times. Now it's asking, do you want to record something live with this, or do you want to work with an existing clip? So if you had already recorded a video with your phone and you wanted to edit that, or several videos, as you'll see in just a minute, you would click Import Clip. If you wanted to record something as it was happening, you would choose Record. In this case, I clicked on Import Clip, and by clicked, I mean pressed with my finger and that takes me down to here. You notice in all these screens, by the way, you have the back arrow at the bottom there. That's a typical just Android feature, but that will take you one step back to where you were before, as will this arrow up here at the top in Video Shop. So you can take a step back anytime you grab the wrong thing or press the wrong place. Now this goes to a screen where it's showing a lot of videos available on my phone and allowing me to choose the one that I want. And so I could select any of these individual videos or several of them, and then go on to the next screen. If you're wondering why do I keep saying or several of them or more than one, if you want to merge several videos together, that's how you would do it. You would edit either each of them individually and then group them together, or you would edit them as a group and make a lot of changes all at once. In this case, for simplicity's sake, I just grabbed one video, but you can see at the bottom these other squares that appear, and if I had selected more than one video, you would see the videos strung along here. Now, there are a lot of different options available with Video Shop, but I wanted to show you some of the key ones here and show you the basics of how you would use one of the features that was there. If we look across the bottom here, you see, well, going from top to bottom, you can see a frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of the video across the top. You can see with this, if I were to play it, you would then watch the video as it runs through. You see the delete option if I wanted to remove this. This is more something you would use if you had selected a whole bunch of videos and then you watch them individually and you said, nope, I don't want that one, so you delete that one from the mix. You have the rotation option and the resizing option. This allows you to change things to letterbox or wider screen, depending on how you want it to display them. Resize here gives you more features with that. Music allows you to add music tracks on top of the sound that's already there. This will allow you to pull songs that are built into the program itself, and it will also allow you to pull music from your phone, so anything that you have saved on the phone. Notice that this does not allow you to get things from cloud services, so if you have something, say, Spotify or um, Amazon Music or something else, where it is not stored locally on the phone, you would not be able to pull music up from that. Some video editing, pro editing programs do allow you to pull things from cloud services, Others do not, so you want to be careful about that and experiment with them and how you'd work with it. Trimming, which I'm going to demonstrate in just a minute, is a key feature. This allows you to edit the video and to either take out bits or keep bits that you want. Um, we'll take a look at how that works in just a moment. Text is if you want to have text display over it, say captions or title locks. If we had gone to the side and looked at other options, we would see a few other interesting ones there. One in particular that I want to point out is the, the speed option that allows you to speed up or slow down the video as you're going through it. And so that is if you wanted to do slow motion or if you had a lot of downtime in the video and you wanted to quickly move through it, you could use the speed option there. Another one, as you might have heard me pressing on as we went through it, is the reverse where the sound appears quickly as you go through there. Or the voice option where you can add sound to there. And finally, we have the rotate or flip if you wanted to change the perspective. 
say if you record something with the um, front-facing camera as opposed to the typical rear-facing camera and everything looks backwards because it does that as a mirror image, you could then flip it and that would correct that appearance as you go through. Now, we're going to select Trim from this. And I want to show you how that looks. So when you are trimming a video, it gives you these options that you can drag around. I would, of course, be dragging them with my finger when I'm editing this with the phone. But you would grab either one of these and you create a stop right there and a start point, And you can cut it down to only that. Now, you notice you have different parts here that you can do. You can either trim, which is the easiest to understand option where you choose only what you want. Then you have the cut option where you can cut out a little bit that you don't want. So if you imagine that you had a minute long video and there were 10 seconds right in the middle that you wanted to cut out, you would use the cut option instead of the trim because the trim would require you to trim out the first part and then trim out the second part as a second video. Finally, you have split, which allows you to break the video into two different parts. So if you wanted to edit them with different sound or different effects to each part of it. When you grab a part to either trim or cut, you will see the time for the total of it right there at the top. And so as you move those around, you'll see that time change. And then if you want to see the video as you have edited it before you save the changes, you would press play and you will watch the video run through. When you are done with the changes you want to make, you press the check mark and that takes you to the next screen. Now I skipped ahead a couple of screens here because the next couple of screens would return to where we were before. So you'd be back up to here and you could choose other effects as you went through it. There are a couple of things that once you've chosen them, you lose some of the other options that are available to you. For example, once you put text on it, the video is more or less finished and you cannot change things like trim it or work with the speed. So be careful about that and experiment with these features as you play around with them. Once you are ready to go, you would press the next button and that will take you to the saving your video part. This is something that we discussed earlier and I wanted to point out again, you can share your video with this and many similar products directly to a lot of social media tools that are available to you here, or you can save it to the gallery on the phone. I again recommend saving things to the gallery because if anything goes wrong with the upload, you might have to redo all the work that you did with editing that video, which as I just talked through it quickly, doesn't seem all that bad. It seems like it went pretty fast, but if you had uploaded several videos and edited all of them and trimmed them and changed the speed and made all kinds of changes, and spent several minutes dragging things around with your finger and then you went to go upload it and it didn't work for whatever reason, that could be frustrating. So save to the gallery first, then go to the app of your choice and upload it that way. That's what I've been happier with in my experience. I hope you found this helpful. If you're interested in this or anything else, please let us know if you'd like to see further classes on these details or anything more that you'd like to learn about. With that, I hope you have a great day and thanks again for joining us for today's class.